Okanagan Symphony, it must be time for your first trumpet lesson. Today we're just going to learn just enough to get you playing a few notes, get you um, starting to exercise, and that's about it. There will be lots more lessons to follow, showing you all the various things that you need to know and helping you develop your skills, but right now, let's just get you playing. First of all, great choice. I know there's some really nice people that chose flutes and clarinets and trombones and who knows what else, but you made the right choice. This is a great instrument. I love it. I hope you do too. Let's start with the business end. This thing here that's in your case is the mouthpiece. If you haven't taken everything out of the case yet, don't. All I really want you to look at right now is this thing. So, it's made of solid brass. It's quite heavy compared to the rest of your instrument because it is drilled out of a solid piece of, of brass. In fact, you can see right through it and you should try. Look through it. If it looks really grungy in there, you're going to need to clean it out probably before you even put it to your lips. We'll get to that another day. Let's assume for the moment that it's clean. You can see through it, it looks all nice and clean, kind of like the beginning of a James Bond film. So, this is where the buzz happens. Sometimes you can get your lips to buzz without the mouthpiece, sometimes you can't, doesn't really matter, as long as you can get them to buzz with the mouthpiece. You get this sound. different note. Um, if you can't make a buzz at all, we will have to address that situation. But let's assume for the moment that you're getting some kind of buzz, so you will get some kind of note out of your trumpet. The trumpet at this point is just an amplifier for that buzz. It takes out all the yuck and turns it into a nice sound, and at the same time, it differentiates the pitches. It, it forces you to play certain notes. The valves will help you get other notes. We'll get into that next time. Right now, let's just see if we can get a sound out of the trumpet. Start with this and make a buzzing sound. Doesn't really matter what note you play. You can play a low note. Or a high note, or something in between, or a bunch of different notes. It's all fun and games. Go for it. Maybe try to buzz a tune that you know. Have some fun. When you're done having fun, come back. You're back! We're going to put the instrument together now, and for us it's really simple. What we do want to do is put the mouthpiece in with a slight inward twist into the lead pipe. That's it. Don't be smacking it. Don't do anything really forceful with it, or you will get the mouthpiece stuck. Now we need to take a little break from instruction at this point to say, if you get your mouthpiece stuck in the instrument, and you can't get it out just by the slight outward twist, or even really gripping it hard and giving it an outward twist, I would stop there. Um, give it to your music teacher and see if that person can remove it. If they can't get it out with their hand, they will probably come after it with something like this. This is a delicate instrument, nice and little mouthpiece removal tool, and it can get the mouthpiece out no matter how stuck it is. I've only come across one, it's hanging on the wall there, where this didn't work. This, this lead pipe I chose to leave this one together. That's all that's left of some poor student's trumpet. Because the kid took it home and dad got on it with the with his iron grip and the kid got on the other end and they yanked it apart and it came right off the trumpet. The whole lead pipe. That solder there, that solder there, and that solder there. They just broke. This thing came right off. They went to the repair shop with it and the guy said, yeah, you know what, that's not worth very much now. Why don't you buy a new trumpet? So, just a warning, if the mouthpiece gets stuck, get some help getting it out. I've left that in there just for fun. Okay, 
So, you have the trumpet together now. You've put your mouthpiece in with a slight inward twist. We're not going to touch the valves today. I just want you to hold the instrument with your left hand. Your left hand. There are some things. Mine has a little spot here for my thumb. All trumpets should have a little ring here on the third valve slide for one of your fingers. I use my fourth finger. Some people use their middle finger. To be honest, I spent about 40 years using my middle finger <laughs> until it got tired. So now I'm on the fourth finger. And it should be a comfortable grip. You shouldn't be tense or uncomfortable holding your trumpet. It should be comfortable because you're going to be practicing quite a bit. Even your band classes will be long, but your practices will be long too. Um, if there's something unusual about your body that makes this impossible, your teacher will probably uh, figure something out. Or you know what? Your teacher probably knows me, so get them to call me. I'll come over. We'll fix it. Okay? We'll make things work. Um, somewhere around here I have a trumpet where I took some parts off and gave them to a friend who didn't have a left hand. He made it work just fine. So, I've got a grip on the instrument. What we're going to do is we're going to put the mouthpiece Carefully now, don't chip a tooth. But carefully put the mouthpiece more or less in the middle both ways. Okay, so not too high, not too low, and try not to wander too far off to one side or another. Now, if your teeth are a little bit messed up like mine, you may find that it's not perfectly centered. That's okay. Just get it on there and see if you can get some kind of a note. I'm going to play this note. I hope you got a note. Um, I am curious if it was the same note or if it was a little higher or a little lower. Don't worry if it sounded really grumbly and, uh, and yucky. That's okay. You just started. It took me a while to make it sound not so grumbly and not so yucky. So try that again. Try to find this note. So what I'm doing here is I'm making tension with these muscles at the side of my mouth, like that. I sort of have a disgusted look on my chin, like this, but I'm not really doing anything tense in the middle, because that's what vibrates for us. We don't have a reed like the clarinets. Our lip actually vibrates. So, it needs to be pretty supple here, which means you can't be pulling the horn onto your face really hard. You're just going to squish these lips flat. They can't take it. That's a chunk of brass with a hole in it. And your teeth and jaws are pretty strong too. So be gentle. That's why, for instance, when we get to the valves, I'm going to tell you not to put your pinky in this pinky ring. Because what most people do with that pinky thing is they go like this. And squish their lips too flat. So your lips need to vibrate. By now we've probably heard from your friends that there's all kinds of different notes that you can get without touching the valves. You're probably getting the one that I'm playing, which by the way is called G, or you're getting a lower one. That's this C. You might even be getting a higher C. One of those three is the most likely. If you're playing some higher notes, that's great. Slow the air down, relax, and let these low notes come out. We're after the low notes right now. By the way, if you're a parent or a helpful sibling or friend who's saying, that's not a G, that's not a G, trumpet players call that note a G. On a piano, it's an F. If you're looking for those Cs, then you want to play a B flat if you're trying to help. However, in trumpet land, these are the names. C, G, C. And for now, that's all we're going to worry about, and I wouldn't even worry about that upper C. Focus on the two low notes. Getting those two notes and alternating between them, like that, is the number one goal for beginning trumpet players. So let's get that happening. If you're getting some other low and 
uh, unusual sound, it's probably not a real note. It, it, you may be getting this sort of grumbly... <laughs> if that's happening to you, use these muscles. Practice once or twice going with very fast air, as though you're um, spitting a cherry seed across the room. So get the air moving fast. You need to take more air in order to do that. So take lots of air, get it moving fast, and that grumble should move up. <laughs> to a real note as your lips begin to vibrate in the air column that you're creating. So, if it's still a challenge, if that my explanation is not good enough here, go to this website, this trumpetheroes.com, you see it up there, and look for the page that is specifically about a low grumbly sound. On that page, there are some tunes that you can play in the extreme low register of the trumpet that will get you going and some ideas for getting you playing so that you don't feel like you're left behind. Your band class, depending on who's teaching, will probably want you to start on the G, which is the second lowest open note. Maybe put down your first valve and play the F. Possibly. Depends on your teacher and, and really what they're thinking about is what are the other instruments doing? The flutes, the clarinets, and the trombones. So, figure out where you are on the instrument. Also on that uh, same page that I just talked about are some reference pitches so that you can figure out what on earth you're doing. You've heard a few notes from me today so you know what they ought to sound like. Um, really, in terms of maintenance, until you get to dealing with the valves, which is next lesson, you don't really need to do too much. If this slide here moves, and it should, maybe pull it out about, I'd say, just a bit more than half an inch or a little bit more than a centimeter, maybe a centimeter and a half. Just pull it out and leave it there. Leave it there for a month. Just don't mess with it but it should be out a little bit. They build trumpets intentionally a little bit short in case the people we're playing with go sharp and we want to play in tune with them. So just take it out, leave it out, that's fine. The instrument now can go back in the case. One more point, when you put the instrument in the case, take the mouthpiece and put it where it belongs. There should be some spot for it with a hole that it sits in or a little compartment, put it in there Make sure it's not going to fly around the case. They make trumpets out of brass because it's easy to bend. And you will bend it with your mouthpiece by accident if you're not careful. Mouthpiece in the case, in the place that it goes, trumpet in the case properly, close and latch the case so that you don't accidentally pick it up and have the thing spilling out all over the floor. Okay, so trumpets put away once more you are going to practice those low notes. I would alternate between them. High, low, low, high. If you can get three of them, great. Include all three of them. Sometimes, use your tongue to initiate the notes. So, tip of the tongue at the top of the teeth like this. That's the tip of my tongue at the top of my teeth. And sometimes, tongue at all. Just using your wind speed to make those note changes happen. That's enough for today. I hope that's enough for you to work on to keep you busy until lesson two. Lesson two, we're going to talk about vowels. What they do, why they're there, that sort of thing. So I look forward to it. See you soon. Now what was I practicing? Oh yeah, that's from the Avengers Endgame. Right at the end, it's an old, old tune by a great trumpet player named Harry James. Look it up on the on the inner tube. You're going to love it.